on the non-instrumental value of doing philosophy. On the instrumental value, could you clarify it? On your, on your graph, it seemed that the, the biggest difference made to general performance was the critical thinking element rather than the philosophy itself. But of course, it was done in association with the philosophy. But do, do we have any reason that critical thinking without the philosophy would, would provide the, the easiest boost to those instrumental benefits? Or do we just not know? Uh, we actually don't know at the moment. So, I mean, it, ideally, in a, in, a, in a perfect scientific scenario, we'd have a class of non-philosophy, a class of philosophy, a class of critical thinking and philosophy, and, of course, a class of critical thinking as well. Um, we didn't have the capacity to be able to do that. Um, and I do recognise that there is a, perhaps a tension there. But what we think at the Philosophy Foundation is that if you can't use those tools within a philosophical inquiry, then it's going to be very hard to learn how to apply them in real life. So I think it's really important for children to be able to see how the critical thinking affects the conversation, because otherwise they're just learning these skills on a shelf that they may never reach, that, reach up for again. Whereas if they can see in real life, oh, someone's used a counterexample against what I was talking about, I'm going to have to rethink what I'm thinking. So that's why we place it in philosophy rather than without. Well, thank you very much to all of you. First of all, uh, you don't have to persuade me at all of the importance and value of philosophy in schools. But I, I want to float three or four questions, perhaps more for thinking about over the next little while uh, than necessarily answering immediately. The first is, there was a fairly strong emphasis on getting back to the Greeks. Um, and. And of course, there's a lot of value in that. But one of the important questions is, are we just in a mess because we haven't continued to follow the Greeks? Or was there something about the long-term consequences of simply following that, and indeed the Enlightenment, that has led us to the problems that we have with fake news? So that's the first question. The second is, there's a lot of emphasis on climate change. But if we'd been talking about this 30 years ago, the existential threat would have been nuclear war. And it hasn't gone away. In fact, it's more likely that we will have a nuclear war now than that we might survive for climate tragedy. And yet it's almost completely ignored. There is no debate in Parliament about it. There's no public debate about it. What's the implication there? That we so ignore that, which is an immediate and, and political threat. The third thing is, this is focused very heavily on European approaches to philosophy. Of course, not just globally, but in our own country, there are many people coming from traditions which have non-European philosophies, which have a very, very different way of thinking and a different set of, if you might like to call them, grammar and syntax of philosophy. Um, so that's, it seems to me, an important question we have to find a way of digesting. And the fourth is that there has been some debate on what we do about religious education. And what's tended to happen is, despite the law, it's, it's increasingly being abandoned. And I can't help but wondering if instead of abandoning it, that might not be a space that could be populated by a broader way of thinking about thinking, including philosophy. Yes, great, um, The observation about the existential, the, the flavour of the month ex existential crisis is a really important one. Um, the, one of my responses would be that since the Cold War and, and that anxiety, there hasn't been a, a renaissance of philosophy in schooling. There has been philosophy in schooling, but it's, it's been limited. So I can only kind of make... Um, kind of, I can only make sort of aspirational claims about what more philosophy might do in the face of the environmental crisis. But certainly, what's happened in that intervening time is intervening time uh, is, is we haven't seen the impact philosophy might have made because it hasn't been happening. Um, but thank you for raising that. Um, I may add. To yeah. That. Um, and in addition to that, uh, surely more broadly speaking, there's always this, there's always an existential crisis, right? 
So that, in a, in a way, says that there is a sense, there's, a, there's a place for something that can deal with that. And I know that Michael Hand is in the audience here, has made a, has made a case before that, um, you know, that there is, in fact, always an existential crisis that we, that we face, and that as individuals we, we come to. For instance, if we're scientists, at some point we have to ask the question, you know, is the model of the atom, the atom that we have, uh, is that representative of how it is, which br brings us to philosophy again? It doesn't matter what subject you're in, doesn't matter what kind of life you're living, there is, in fact, always these existential and philosophical problems which we hit upon. And then the question is, well, what kind of tools do we have to deal with them? Um, philosophy, I would say, is a good place to start. Um, yes, sure. Just, just one, one more thing about the kind of Western-centric flavour of um, philosophy and schooling that you're getting so far. There is an international um, network of educators, academics, philosophers, um, philosophising in schools, um, and one of the ways they're connected is through the International Council on um, Philosophical Inquiry in Schools. And um, you see a, an enormous, rich diversity of philosophical practices happening within that community. And only recently, with my colleague uh, Fufi, I was able to, and, and Josh, who can't be here, was able to spend some time in Thailand working with uh, academics and educators there, at where the intersection of this kind of Jewian practice that might be more typical of, of the way I was working intersected with Buddhism. And um, that was extremely reciprocal and interesting and informative for both of our practices. So those synergies are happening, although I guess those who have spoken so far are speaking from the UK. Um, which might explain our Western-centric practice. So thank you.